A lot of people ask me if Revive promotes forward growth. And if you've been following my blog for a while, you'll see that I never use this term forward growth. And so some people might think, oh, maybe some of these other methods like mewing or orthotropics are achieving forward growth better than Revive. And so I want to dispel that myth. Like, I think Revive is better than them at achieving what they are saying they are trying to achieve. But the term forward growth for me is just incorrect. I'm going to explain what I mean today. What do folks mean by forward growth? So generally what they're talking about is like the horizontal dimension of your skull. So models, professional athletes, they tend to have a very nice profile. So if you don't have a profile or you scrub the biomechanics, this ends up being like a slanting line up. If you have a very good profile, you can even have a slanting line the opposite way, right? So the people that talk about poor growth, they're also, they're often showing their profile and they're often showing their maxilla bone. So the maxilla bone is like the key bone that is kind of around here that people like to say represents forward growth. And they like to think that it grows somehow or that it moves forward. Right? And, and I was honestly in that camp back in 2015, 2016, I was doing a lot of face pulling and intraoral pulling. And there was a guy, Plato, who was the person that started Starector right before me. He was number one, I was number two, and he had a face pulling website. And so a whole bunch of us back in like 15, 16, were doing all kinds of face pulling. And I even had like my own homemade face mask and all this stuff. And I didn't see it achieve anything, to be honest, right? And I was playing on and off with this stuff for probably a couple of years. Uh, and I never saw any, like when, when I started seeing the soft tissue that I talk about working, like it, <clears throat> the impact was just on a completely different level. You know, like the face pulling, it was arguably, it was arguable whether it was doing anything. Whereas the, fa the soft tissue stretching that I was doing was, was creating a lot of change. Where does this notion come from? So Generally, I, I would attribute for this term forward growth from the muse. So first John, then Mike, and the whole orthotropics that they, you know, set into motion talks about this a fair bit and, you know, talks about the airway and keeping your tongue up to the roof of the mouth. And a lot of people that do mewing talk about forward growth and that's kind of how it's really become mainstream. And you see all these mewing folks who are putting it on TikTok and YouTube and showing these before and afters. Like I would say like when I see these and I've seen them a fair bit over the years, like I would say 95% of the time, I don't see any change. Uh, and the reason you can look at a person's eyes, right? If the shape of the eyes have not changed, you have not moved your skull or changed your face considerably. What they're doing is they're just changing the angle of the head or changing the posturing on the neck or they're changing the light or they're changing the angle of the, of the camera. And that, that's not real change. If a person does real change, I can see it in their eyes right away. And I sometimes do see it. But I think the people that have real change are the people that are wearing like a Meyer brace or something at night and have something to keep their gains. Anyway, I also think this is the wrong way to think about the problem, calling it forward growth. And the reason I say that is because if you think about the skull, it's like ChatGPT says it's 22 bones. I've heard osteopaths say it's 27 bones. But anyway, let's go with 22 bones. They're connected at soft tissue sutures and the bones can all move, right? Like if you ever work with an osteopath, he'll actually move bones a little bit with his fingertips with very light pressure. The fact is that bones move and that when someone has a poor profile, they generally are always much more asymmetric, right? So if someone has a more flat profile, it means that like this stuff isn't out Everything's not positioned where it should be. And so I like to think of it like, like a windshield getting, you know, like you take like a hammer to a windshield, right? That's kind of what happens to your skull. So everything's kind of pushed in and the bones are probably more or less the right size, but they're just, they're deranged into the wrong position, right? So my process with the soft tissue is kind of inflating all that back out. Like you can imagine putting an air pump into the car so that you're inflating the windshield from the inside. That is how I like to think about it. I think you can pretty clearly show that like in adults, you know, regardless of what they're doing, they're not actually growing the maxilla much or moving it much. Because if you have ever played with the model of, of a skull, of an adult skull, like you'll see that that just doesn't make sense, right? Like it's, it's like a puzzle, 
right? Like you're not going to take one bone and move it anywhere because it's connected to a whole bunch of other bones. And you're not going to grow it much without growing the rest of the, the bones, right? And so that's why I like to think about the entire skull inflating or expanding and not just one bone doing something because it's, you know, when you, when you get to see how the skull actually is engineered, like it just doesn't make sense. And then about whether some other methods achieve this kind of mythical forward growth faster than revive. And I say no. And the reason I say no is because I've done a lot of these experiments with intraoral pulling. I'm, I'm pretty sure I know like very similar things to what the mewing world crowd is doing. And like, I like to say, hey, like, don't tell me your theories, right? Like, show me on a tracking splint that it is improving the curve of speed and changing the occlusion faster than just wearing a rubber mouth guard. And if so, then I'll agree, like it expedites the process, right? And it might expedite the process a little bit because it is kind of stretching soft tissue, but it's not doing any, like it's not, it's working on the same soft tissue that I talk about. So any body work, my functional work will also accelerate the results of Revive a little bit. Right? But do I think that they're doing something fundamentally different? No. Like, I think it's more or less the same thing. And I, I don't even view intro pulling as, as the faster way to kind of achieve change in this game. Also focusing on bones only. So you could say, oh, they're, but they're moving bones. They're not like stretching soft tissue, but look at every other practice where you're focusing on moving bones. So you got like chiropractors, physiotherapists, osteopaths, you know, all these other body workers who focus on the bones and against this biomechanical collapse are completely useless, right? Like you'll see story after story of people who went to chiropractors for years and achieved nothing. And they're in the same back tightness and pain that they were because you absolutely need to work by the soft tissue and you need to, in order to compound your results, you need to be wearing some kind of appliance in the evening. So last thought was ALF. You know, I think the ALF appliance is one that I used on and off for years. They promote that they're helping great growth. And I think that that's more or less completely BS. I think that sometimes ALF doesn't really do much damage either. That's a good thing. It's a very light force and it doesn't lock an occlusion. But the problem is, is that it doesn't like, it doesn't work the soft tissue either. Like it's only connected to your teeth. So the only thing that I think why certain people seem to be getting results with ALF, whereas a lot of other people do not, is what is the dentist doing with the ALF, right? I had one dentist that put me on a flat plane splint with the ALF and I had results, but the results was not from the ALF. The results was from the flat plane splint. I went to another ALF dentist and he often used composite. So if you use composite turbos, yeah, you're going to get results with the ALF. Another one was actually leaving you kind of an open posterior bite. And I'd heard from several people that had been to him that they actually regressed a lot, which to me makes complete sense. Yeah, they wore the ALF, but it didn't save them from the fact that they were sleeping every night with an open posterior bite. That's kind of like how I think about this whole forward growth hypothesis. I don't like to call it forward growth. I like to call it inflating the, the skull and everything works via this soft tissue that I talk about. Thanks.